Are you kidding me? The five car broken engine a week ago at Daytona. Now here they are in the playoffs. I've blown up a lot this year, so I know what it feels like. Up, Chase up, up, up. Elliott. Chase Elliott involved as well as the 14 of Briscoe. Smoke yes. coming out of the 18. Coming out of the pipes. The 18 is blowing up. up. Just unfortunate circumstances for us tonight. Tomorrow, the sun, will, the sun will come up tomorrow. Big flames coming out from underneath the hood of Harvick. What a disaster, man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Backseat Drivers. I'm Alex Weaver, joined by uh, our pattern twins here, triplets, <laughs> whatever you want to call us, uh, Kim Coon and Kyle Petty on the Backseat Drivers table. An exciting race at Darlington. It went into the late hours at Darlington. We always like to run the Southern 500 as, as we into the hours as we can. Yes. So uh, the first race of the first round of the playoffs has already been trouble for many drivers. We saw issues with Chase Elliott, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson. Eric Jones gets the win and plays the playoff spoiler, but it didn't come without consequences to Chase Elliott. He bumped down to ninth. He was sitting at uh, P1. He's now only 14 points to the good. Kevin Harvick and Daniel Suarez switch positions. Daniel Suarez is now two above the elimination line, whereas Kevin Harvick is now 13 below. Uh, but Kyle Busch, I don't know if he's happy, mad, irritated. I don't know what he is, but here's what he had to say uh, following his troubles at Darlington. Engine broke. So just unfortunate circumstances for us tonight. The guys did a great job, brought a really fast M&M's Toyota Camry. Just uh, real proud of the effort and all the stuff that, uh, you know, the guys have, have done and gone through with um, just – all the news and everything you know going on through the year they've they've dug in they've never given up and they, they continue so just had a great car and um, don't come out with anything to show for it that's that's what I really really hate about it the Sun will come up tomorrow all right Casey well the Sun will come up apparently tomorrow for Cobblish and uh, this morning the Sun did come up so he was right <laughs> uh, but these play playoff drivers uh, the, the points deficit is just so hard to, to tell right now because of how close they are but if you don't fire off on all cylinders for these opening races. I mean, you're out after the round of 16. You know, I don't know that we can be talking about drivers with huge detriments or having to climb out of a bad points position because everybody's going to have problems throughout the playoffs. It's not going to be, I think, one team or a couple teams that yeah. continuously. We're going to see everybody across the board have some sort of issues. That's just how it goes when we go playoff racing. And you look at Logano. He's the best on the playoff board right now, plus 38. That's not a huge buffer. And then at the very bottom, Kevin Harvick, the last spot is only minus 13. Those are points that can be easily made up in stages. And so I don't even think we can be talking about huge detriments because I don't know that we're going to see it, at least in these first couple of rounds. It's going to be pretty level playing field, yeah. I think, through the course of the playoffs. Yeah, we talked about it during uh, for the last week, ever since the field has been set. Uh, there is more parity mm -hmm. and it's more level than it's ever been. So it's not, there's not, we're not going to get those huge swings where, oh, that's a bad race, you're out. Thanks for playing. Come back next year. We're, we're not going to get that because you're going to be able to make those up at stage points. You're going to be able to make them up during the course of one single race. I mean, we see huge swings in the course of one race. Uh, and I agree. Everybody's going to have trouble. And that's going to be the issue this year. The guy that wins when we get the Phoenix is the team that puts themselves in the best position and doesn't have that catastrophic day and has good solid pit stops. They don't have to be the best. No pit road penalties. You can't beat yourself because that's what it's going to come down to. It's so even that you're going to beat yourself more so than you get beat. All right. Well, 55 years to the day, the 43 uh, was in victory lane at Darlington, obviously with the king, Richard Petty. But Eric Jones landing the victory at Darlington. We now have had... 17 different winners this season. One more time for Steve Letarte. Yep. 17, 17 different winners. Took us winners. one more week than it's we all thought. That's right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll take it. Kim and I didn't specify really when we would get it, but we got it. Uh, we have had 19 different winners in 2001. That's the record. So do we have 19 winners this season, or do uh, we surpass that? But here's what Eric Jones had to say uh, following the historic win at Darlington. I get a hat. <laughs> he told me I get a hat if I win. But uh, man, Richard hasn't been to uh, Victory Lane at Darlington probably since he last won here. So just awesome. Just so proud of these guys. Petty GMS, the Focus Backer crew. Uh, man, we've been so close here and there all year. And 
I didn't think today was going to be the day. You know, it was going to be a tough one to win, I knew, but no better fitting place, man. I love this track. I love this race. And on that trophy twice, man, I was pumped to be on it once, but have it on there twice, pretty cool. So we obviously, 17 winners is now the number yeah. on the season. So 19, do we get there? Do we surpass it? What do you think? Listen, I was, as the season started, you didn't know what to expect. We're 27 races into the season. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to expect. Mm. So I say yes. I, I say you get to 19. I'm not saying you won't get to 20 or 21 with this group. Wow. Yeah, you know what? I mean, it's a crazy year. Yeah. How can we just had a conversation about how level the playing field and have, how after one race, no one's out of the out of the championship hunt. It's the same way. Nobody's out of the win hunt. Nobody is out of the win hunt. Yeah. Uh, and any given time, Michael McDowell was up there again yesterday. Mm -hmm. I mean, you put guys like that at the Roval, you put guys like that, uh, Bush or guys like that, there's still guys out there yeah. that can win races. Sure, Kim and I were even talking about, you have Blaney who is yet to get a yes. win. You have Martin Trux Jr. who's yet That's to get right. a win. You have Michael McDowell, Chris Busher, who's been running well. I mean, we're going to get, Steve Letarte, we're going <laughs> to get 19. <laughs> That's going to be the new number for Steve. Yeah. Steve, exactly. that's the new number. I do think we get to 19. Uh, you have to give, you know, a little bit more argument to get me to think that we're going to see more than 19. Yeah. I think there's opportunities for it, but we always know that the playoff drivers and teams up their game, sure. and they do end up winning a lot of the playoff races. But I have the Roval circled. I have Talladega. Don't forget, we go back <laughs> Super Speedway racing. Yeah. yeah. So I certainly think that we will get to 19. I think Trucks and Blaney are those guys that I'm looking at yeah. for those additional wins, despite the bad luck they've had yeah. this season in trying to get to victory lane. But 19 winners. I can't imagine a more beautiful thing. Ooh, I could tell you all about it, Casey. All right, well, the Xfinity Series also had uh, quite the wild finish. It was no short of action at Darlington. And it was under the lights at the Lady in Black on Saturday night. Larson and Creed did not hold back in the final lap of the race, beating and banging to the finish. Sheldon Creed and Kyle Larson took each other out, which left the door open for uh, the old mustache man of Noah Gregson to take the win. With the Xfinity Series playoffs looming, uh, is the intensity heating up, or has it just always been there? Here's what those drivers had to say following Saturday night's race. There's a lot of contact I want to do, and now Larson readies the car again. Gosh, I was just trying to hold on. Uh, hope we, uh, hope I give the fans a show there. That was a wild ending. Watch no aggression right here. The nine looking low. We put on one hell of a show for the fans, so that's what the Xfinity Series is all about. He pulled the video game move. He's in the wall. Can he keep the front line? Here comes Noah Gregson. Creed cannot do it, and Gregson will win at Darlington. All right, Kim, so I'm starting with you on this one. We've been following the Xfinity Series all year long. There is now two races left before they kick off their playoff stint. Have you been impressed with the Xfinity Series? I feel like the intensity has pretty much been there all season long. I've definitely been impressed. First, I want to say how fun it was to watch the end of that race. And you've yeah. heard it from the guys, from Larson, from Gregson. Creed, Smiles even. on their face. Creed, yeah. a smile on his face, talking about how much fun he was having racing. And that's despite yeah. losing what would have been a potential playoff for. Yeah. So to still be able to say, you know, I had a good time doing this was really a testament to how good the on-track action was. But we've seen this all year long from this series, and we've seen different dust-ups. You look mm -hmm. at Martinsville, the action at Portland, Road America, Richmond, it goes on. And looking at the stats, six races this season have had a last lap pass in the Xfinity Series, yeah. and then about half of the races we've seen that pass come in the last five or six laps. Yeah. So we have seen this on-track action <clears throat> all year long from these guys, and, and a lot of it is that's what this series is. Yeah. They're trying to prove themselves, and we forget, too, a lot of them are younger, so we see kind of a little bit more rough and tumbleness out of them. So here's what I think. I mean, it's the series, and their tagline is where names are made. Mm -hmm. um, they see that same type action on Sunday. Okay, they've seen that same type action when they were 13, 14, 15, coming up through the, the late model ranks. They want to emulate what Joey Logano, what Denny Hamlin, what Kyle Larson, what those guys did. Then you put them out there with Kyle Larson. Mm -hmm. You talk about Creed. Then you put them out there, and it's like, well, I've seen you race like this. I want to race <laughs> like this too. So I think the intensity comes to the sport in a different place mm -hmm. than probably what it has. Uh, it's going to pick up more. Wait till they actually get in the playoffs, and then it's really going to get. Tense. Um, okay, backseat bets presented by BetMGM. Time to break down. Uh, Kansas is up next for the NASCAR Cup Series. We're heading to the Sunflower State, and this first one 
We're gonna go with um, the momentum. We always like to throw in the momentum driver here with Eric Jones versus Daniel Suarez. Casey, I'm starting with you on this one. I'm gonna go EJ. I think he's got Ooh. that momentum you talked about. And actually thinking about it now, he might be a driver that surprises us yeah. and gets a second win before the Ooh. end of the season. Because Ooh. they've run very well yes, all have. season long. It's only been a matter of time before they were going to be in victory lane, in I my opinion. We've picked yeah. him how many yeah. weeks so many. this yeah. year have we picked him to yeah. be the race winner? So it would not surprise me if somehow in the next nine races they find a way to win again. I love it. Yeah, that's listen, it's, it's tough. It's tough to go against Eric Jones right now because momentum means so much. Sure. We see it yeah. all year long. We sit at this desk and talk about the guy who won yesterday. And then guess what? He's competitive the next week and the next week. You have to go with Eric. Penn has yet to be placed on the old contract paper. What team gets old Rowdy for 2023? KP, hey, where do you think he's going? I thought the sun come up um, <laughs> tomorrow was only fitting <laughs> since he's looking for Daddy Warbucks and a, and yeah. a oh. boat, boat load of money there. So yeah. I, I thought that was very fitting. Um, I have no idea. You, you know, I, I've, I've quit caring, I, honestly. It, it's drug on so long. It is a a long driver time. the mm -hmm. caliber of Kyle Busch should walk out of one shop right into the next shop. Mm -hmm. That's how simple it is. Yeah. If this had been Tim Richmond, if this had been Jeff Gordon, if this had been Jimmy Johnson, listen, they would be people knocking on his window in the parking lot of Hendrick Motorsports mm -hmm. saying, here's, here's the paper, man, mm -hmm. here, here it is. Why did that not happen to Kyle Busch? And that's the bigger question that, that is a bigger concern when you start looking at it. Um, he's gonna end up with someone, you know he's not gonna end up with Penske. Yeah. You know he's mm -hmm. not going to end up with Hendrick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know he's not. I, I don't believe he's going to end up with Stuart Haas since they re-signed mm -hmm. Eric Eric Almirola. And you look at all that. Sure. So the signs do not point for me. Okay. To what I consider an elite team. Mm -hmm. It's a team right below that. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a team, not maybe a little bit higher than Petty GMS and some of the teams that we've talked about. But there's another layer of teams in there. Ganassi was one of those teams, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I, so does that mean he's gonna have to go there and build and have to start over? I mean, what's, what's his record gonna look like? Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see how his career goes from this point forward. You don't think he's back in the 18? I don't think he's back in mm -hmm. the 18. I, I don't believe mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. No, if, if he had been back in the 18, they would have, listen, this had been a long time yeah, ago. Knock yeah, knock it off. Yeah, yeah, they've given up on this. Yeah, you stole the words right out of my mouth. Um, I'll get specific on those, like, middle, <laughs> yeah. those yeah. just under the top teams. I'm looking at Trackhouse. I'm looking at RCR. I could see him potentially landing yeah. at either of those. I absolutely can tell you, though, I do not think he is back at JGR. Mm. And to your point about the length this is taking, yes. if he was going to end up back with Joe Gibbs Racing, it would have already happened. And so because we've seen this latency in signing a contract, I think that is very indicative that we will not see him back in the 18 car. Just another number I have to get used to, right? <laughs> Gosh. Um, all right, well, there has been rumors about 2311 being in the mix for Rowdy and for Kyle Busch, but uh, 2311 right now made the switch. This is another thing you have to get used to. Uh, Bubba Wallace is now in the 45. Ty Gibbs right now is in the 23, obviously given Kurt's condition. Uh, we're still thinking about you, Kurt. We're for ready sure. for you to get yeah. back. Uh, but the owner's championship is now coming into play. And the top dogs right now, per usual, we're looking at Team Penske, Hendrick Motorsports, uh, but 2311 has the 45 in the 10th position right now. So can they win the owner's championship? I don't think so. <laughs> I'd love in, you know, the perfect fantasy land yeah. that they, you know, end up winning it, especially after the struggles they've had and, and having to move things around. But it's going to take for that team to win the owner's championship multiple wins. Yeah. yeah and I just do not see them getting multiple wins. Now, maybe a very, very, very long stretch, Hail Mary, you know, Bubba continues to run well, and then by the grace of God, Kurt mm -hmm. gets back in the car for maybe the last handful of races and is able to get to victory lane. Then I think we can talk about them being better contenders for that championship. Now, I am really excited to see what Bubba is able to do in the 45, and I think this is a pressure test for him, sure, yeah. is what it is. Let's put him in the 45, the car that's going for that owner's championship, and see what kind of gusto he brings. So that to me is what is gonna be interesting. I don't see them as that owner's championship contender, but I'm excited to watch their journey over the next nine races. Yeah, I, listen, I agree. I, I, think, I think Bubba being in that car, that car running for a championship, uh, even though it's an owner's championship, 
that team, the way they reorganized, the way they put people in, in places, was to give these guys, all of them, the, the whole shop, yeah. an opportunity to say, this is what it feels like to contend. This is what it feels like to race. It gives them a look at the big prize with not necessarily having that opportunity to win the driver's championship. But they do have, have that opportunity for the owners because they're, they're in the game. So we are definitely excited to see what Bubba Wallace can do in that 45 for the rest of the season going after that owner's championship. But now it's time for Kansas, the Sunflower State. And uh, before we make our picks, everything that we've said already on the show, you can text 31032. It's Kyle or Kim to that number. Text Kyle. Disagree with, <laughs> <laughs> Disagree with Kyle. Text me. Text me. <laughs> uh, but let's get our victory lane picks for Sunday. Uh, KP, I'm interested to see if you go with a playoff driver or a non-playoff driver. You know what? I'm going to go with a non-playoff driver. Oh, gosh. Don't take my pick. Okay. We'll see. Let her go first. Okay. Go, Kim. You probably aren't picking nope. mine. Um, I'm going to go with Martin Truex Jr. Mm. Oh, my gosh. That's who I was going to pick. <laughs> no. No. He's a <laughs> multi-time winner at Kansas. Ugh. It's a good pick. Just the absolute heartbreak yeah. we yeah. saw from him and just the transparency he shared. It was such a classy shared. movie, though. I, oh, thanks. Um, he shared with us and the emotion he... Yeah. You know, yeah. Insane, brought to the yeah. service yeah. and yeah. didn't care that people saw. You can tell how badly he wants it. Yeah. Um, and because they've w run well at Kansas before, I'm, I'm hoping and thinking that MTJ will be in victory lane. All right. Okay, so I was, I, that, listen, I thought about that. It's a good pick. Um, so here's where I'm going. Huh. This, this is going to be a crazy pick for you. Huh. I'm going with Eric Almarola. Okay. Uh, Eric has a uh, great history yes. at that place. He's set on poles there, he's mm -hmm. run well there. Uh, they've struggled off and on. They've just re-signed their deal. Sure. Smithfield, some of, their, some of their corporate company is mm -hmm. out there in the Kansas City area. They'll put an effort in. They'll put an effort in okay. this place. So this is a place that, that you can look for that 10 to, to run, I believe, right. uh, up front and, mm -hmm. and have an opportunity. And that's all you got to do. We saw it at Darlington. You run up front, you got an opportunity. I don't hate that pick. I don't hate yeah. it either. Bacon at the end of the Yellow Brick Road. Wouldn't yes. that be nice for yeah. the 10? Uh, I'm going with the playoff driver, and uh, I'm going to go with the 11 of Denny Hamlin. I think it's time for the 11 to show back up. And that's who I'm going with. So we'll see. All right, well, uh, not only do you have to tune into the race this weekend, but you also have to catch the race for the championship, which is every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on USA. Take a look at this week's episode. This is an event that drivers have been dreaming about. It's hard to describe how special this race is. It's our Super Bowl. It's the unknown. You don't know what's gonna happen. I understand there are dangers. Big wreck in here. Smash into the wall, into the air! So it's a dangerous sport. Heck, everything can be dangerous. For me, just being still and saying a little prayer, just being thankful for everything in my life seems to help. So many times it's easy to overlook the fact that we're living history right now. Years from now, people will be saying, my gosh, I was there for a part of history. Let's be efficient. We just got to be there at the end. It's a race that every driver wants to end their career and say that they have won. I'm no different in that. I want to check that box, too. I think we're very capable of doing that. I want to win it. I want to steal the show. All right, so you have a lot of homework. You have to watch Race for the Championship on Thursday night. You have to tweet Kim, KP, and myself about how great this show was all week long. And then tune in to Kansas at 3 p.m. Eastern Sunday on USA. Uh, will both of you be there? I will be there. I will not. Oh. Okay. All right, Kansas will be a good time. It's the second race for the round of 16 for the NASCAR Cup Series playoff drivers. Enjoy it, and thanks for hanging out with us here on Backseat Drivers. This year, see more.
the full field of in-car cameras. 